what I'm going to cover is power partnering. I can't do it justice. Everybody thinks power partnering is, is meeting people and selling them their stuff or handing them a card or say, hey, when you come across a referral, I created a six and a half hour program just on the one topic of power partnering, just that one topic. And I'm going to try to teach it to you in 38 minutes. I know more than I'm showing you guys today. I'm going to give you as much as I can. Briefly on elevator speech. Okay, and then briefly on how to become the best known person. I don't care what you do in, in a year and a half to two years. I could teach you. I don't care what industry you're in. Real estate mortgage. I've trained thousands of real estate agents, mortgage lenders, financial advisors, CPAs, chiropractors. That's my specialty. Thousands of them. Be the best known person in your city, and I'll tell you how to do that. Okay, and that's about five hours of training, but I'm going to just give you the gist of it. Okay, so real quick about me. It's the only joke I purposely put in here. I have a PhD from what's called an Automobile University. If you're not laughing now, you're not gonna laugh at all in the next 40 minutes. All right, so I worked for Eastman Kodak years ago, servicing copiers in the 90s. I listened to around nine or 10,000 hours, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, Bob Proctor, you name it, I own it. It's been 70 grand on CDs. My friend, are you crazy? 70 grand on CDs? Are you nuts? Yeah, they're all smoking pot and doing all that stuff. I've made millions and millions of dollars from those CDs, so I'm not crazy. I've also read over 500 books. The average college graduate doesn't, doesn't the 90 percent, 97 point something percent of all college grads never dirty the door of a bookstore after they graduate from college. That's when I started my education. So I probably have five or six college degrees from what I did in my car and the books I've read. But I didn't just read it. Here's the thing. You've never met a billionaire librarian because it takes a little bit more than just having the information. It's all there where they work. You gotta do something with it. I'm a go-getter and I did something with it, okay? I was not a natural at networking. I had to learn it. Everything can be learned. We didn't know how to speak when we were born. We learned it. Everything can be learned. People go, Rick, I can't be like you. I don't have the energy you do. I am an introvert. My wife's right there, you can ask her. As soon as I leave here and go back in the car, I'm gonna sit in my backyard for three or four hours, smoke cigars and not talk to anybody. But I have a passion and a desire to teach this crazy thing called networking because everybody thinks this is networking. Hi, my name's Rick. Hi, I'm Karen. Everybody thinks networking is, hi, this is what I do. Hi, this is what I do. I want you to understand, if you're talking, you're marketing. If you're talking, you're marketing. If you're handing out a business card, you're marketing. If you're handing out flyers or telling people on a website, you're marketing, you are not networking, you will not get referrals from that. If you're talking, you're marketing. If you're listening and finding people, other people that they can meet, that's part of networking. So people go, I network all, Rick, you teach networking, you made millions of dollars doing that, yes. But I network all that, hand out my business card, what are you gonna teach me about handing out my business card? I can't teach you anything about that because that's called marketing. So I just wanna make very clear, if you're handing out your card, you're not a networker. I just wanna make very clear on that. I'm very passionate about this topic, about 10,000 hours of study just in the top of how to get referrals, okay? I've heard way over 20, probably 25,000 elevator speeches. I have 3,000 hours of study in the one topic of giving an elevator speech. Just the topic of elevator speech, 3,000 hours. The most important, the, the, the number one way to be successful in the networking group, number one is show up. Number two, your elevator speech. There's nothing more important. You need to have five or six different elevator speeches, okay? Excuse me. You have to have one when you're in a sales presentation. You have to have one when you meet somebody at a grocery store. The one you use in a networking group is not a sales presentation. You're not selling to anyone. You should never direct your elevator speech at anyone in the room. You're teaching them what you do. You're firing their reticular activating system, which is in the brain stem. So when they leave the meeting, they can find you referrals. You guys want to hear the best elevator speech you've ever heard in your life? Really? Yes. 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 Okay. I'm gonna bring my wife up here before I do. With what I'm gonna teach you today, 60,000 a year four years ago, 400,000 last year in income. That's my wife, Marcella, using what I'm gonna teach you today. It's a little bit more than that, but she took my programs, dug, tore it apart. Very successful lady. Here's her elevator speech. Go ahead, Marcella. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marcella Silva, land banking consultant. I help individual investors diversify and create wealth through land in very specific high growth areas of California. General Douglas MacArthur said it best when he said, All a man has to do to get rich in America is find out where people are going, get there first, buy land what's affordable, and then wait. So if you hear a friend, family member, or client say, 
Man, I'm sick of tenants' toilets and termites. I have an old floor one here, Ira, and the only way it goes up is when I put money into it. I need to diversify my portfolio, or I need to do a 1031 exchange. So those would be excellent referrals for me. Marcelo, Marcelo Silva, investing in land because they're not making any more. Clap, clap. I have her do that almost every talk I do, and it's amazing she still comes along. <laughs> so Marcella, nine-year software engineer, grew up in New Mexico in the mountains. She dealt with horses and hunting and all that kind of stuff. Lawrence Silver Lab, she's a software engineer. Okay, as a general rule, engineers, CPAs, some mathematical types, it's not their natural thing. It can be learned. You guys understand? Everything can be learned. That wasn't Mar that what you just saw wasn't her four years ago. This stuff can be learned. Okay. Very proud of you. Thank you very much for doing that. I've had this is how you become the best known person in your. I've personally had over 4,300, not 43, not 430, 4,300 one-on-one -on -one meetings in coffee shops. Well, no, you haven't. Yes, I have. It's a lot of coffee shops. You do the math on eight to 10 a week for 11 and a half years, you could do the math on, it's not hard to figure out. I still do them now, I don't even need to work anymore. I still do five a week, we probably did six or seven this week. I don't even need to leave the house anymore because of what I'm gonna teach you today. When you have a network built, when you have a network built, now keep in mind, everybody in the room, somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 30 hours a week, you are looking for business. That's just a fact of life. Five to 30 hours a week, you're looking for business. When you're getting five to eight referrals a week, then I'm not spending the time you are. So that frees up five to 30 hours a week to hang out, go on hikes, smoke a lot of cigars, watch baseball games, don't have to do a lot. But it took me nine years to build it. Nine years to get where I don't have to do it anymore. It doesn't, it's not overnight. Marcella's did it in about two and a half or three. She's smarter than I am. And also it took me five years to figure it all out and then put it into a system that I could, if I could do it, I knew I could build it into something to teach it to other people. I want you to understand, professional networkers do not look for clients. Salespeople look for clients. Marketers look for clients. I never look for clients, ever. In that elevator speech, she said a perfect client for me is if you hear a friend or family member say any of the following. What we're doing is we're firing the reticular activating system and we can do that and get people's heads to go up and down like that because we're firing something that's in the brain stem. Again, I don't have time to teach that. At the end, I can give you a YouTube link and you can watch me teach it to you on YouTube, okay? So what she did is she educated you on what you do and then she had you listen for quotes. So when you leave, if you ever hear somebody say those things, her face is gonna pop in your mind. That's in my opinion what you should be doing in networking groups, whether it's BNI, LATIP, here, whatever networking group is, including Chamber of Commerce events. I would never, under any circumstance, recruit or sell to the person I'm talking to because if they don't, if they're not interested in what you want, if they don't want to buy what you're selling, their mind says no. So when you walk up to when you pitch them, you're gonna get a yes or a no. You will never get a referral because all they're trying to do is figure out how to get out of the conversation. If you go up to somebody and you go, hey, if you ever hear anybody say, hear a friend or family member say, I'm looking to buy or sell my home in the next six months, think of me. And then somebody will go, you know what, I wanna talk to you. But if you go up to that same person and go, are you looking to buy or sell a home in the next six months? No, right? Because if you pitch the person directly, you get a yes or no. You will never get referrals from that. The day you turn the pitch fest off, and you go up to every person and you say, if you hear somebody say, that back's bothering me. I don't have any clue how I'm going to ever retire. We just thought of a chiropractor and a financial advisor, did we not? Yeah. I programmed all of your minds with that. I can do it for every industry in the room very easily. You need to figure out what your quotes are and get them out to people and stop pitching everybody you meet. Because if some of you, if you've been in business longer than 10 years and you're in this room, you gotta build a referral based practice. You shouldn't still be here. You should not be here. My, my goal is to, is to get you out of being my student two or three years. If you're still around after two or three years, I haven't done my job. You should not be learning from me after two or three years. Okay, one of the biggest advantage, advantages of being highly networked is you spend more time serving your clients because let's face it, nobody's making any money sitting in here right now. 
I run networking groups for a living. I know. People go, oh, it's an hour and a half of my time. Well, down the road, we can qualify and justify by how many referrals we got from it. But especially attorneys give me the hardest time. Well, I charge 350 an hour. Yeah, but if you make 100 grand a year for my groups, I don't care about your 350 an hour. But people still want to ju cost justify the time. <clears throat> so we want to try to build a network because it's leverage. So if we cold call and we bring in the phones, it's one call for one piece of activity. If I'm a chiropractor and I meet a personal fitness coach, I could get 30 clients from that. If I'm a real estate agent, I mean a mortgage lender, human resources consultant, I could get 30 clients from that. One meeting equals 30. People that door knock and premise, all that kind of stuff, one door knock, maybe you gotta do 50 door knocks to make one sale, I'll make one door knock and make 50 sales. That's why the income is so high, because I use leverage. I network and I dig into other people's networks using the law of reciprocity, which we don't have, we don't have uh, time to cover all of that stuff. So power partnering, it's called collaborative partner, POI, COI, I don't care what you call it. In this world, it's called a power partner. Okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna get deep into that. So power partnering is basically meeting somebody and pardon my French, I'm not French, listen for the bitching and complaining. All I do, everybody complains, nobody brags. Very rare, you hear people saying positive, like, oh my God. Right? When you hear a complaint, open up your business card holder. I, when I did my coffee meetings years ago when I first started, two four inch D-ring binders, 4,000 cards. I'd sit down and I'd open them up and go, tell me what's going bad in your life. Oh, I got people coming over my house. My house is a mess. Good, here's, here's three house cleaners. Call them and let them know that. My husband got relocated, we gotta move. Here's a real estate agent, here's a, here's a mover. What else do you need? What do you need to help you with that? My back's been bothering me, chiropractor, acupuncturist, personal fitness trainer, that is a networker. When you're asking people what's going on in their life and you're finding other people in the room to solve the problem, that's a networker. When you leave here and you take the list and you start trying to sell your stuff to everybody, you're a salesperson, you're not gonna get referrals. It's not bad to be a salesperson. I'm gonna sell you guys two programs at the end of the day if you wanna buy it, cool. If you don't, it's not a problem. Still gonna go home and smoke cigars, okay? We're all salespeople. But if you want referrals, you have got to learn how to do this. Two faucets. The sales faucet's on, the networker's off. There are times you have to turn the sales guy off and turn the networker on, or you just flat out won't get referrals. That's the way it is. We have to know when to sell and when to get referrals. In this room, I would never, in the under circumstances, if I could say it a thousand times, somebody at the next meeting is gonna try to sell somebody in the room. Don't sell to the people in the room. Build a relationship, get referrals from them. If they wanna buy from you, they'll let you know. That's the easiest way to say it. Anybody in the room wants to buy from you, you're here. They know what you do. You don't need to sell to them. All right. So power partnering. Some of the ways it's used is to get the decision maker. Get referred to clients. Refer them to your clients. Real estate agent to a carpet cleaner, all that kind of good stuff. Okay. So let's just go down the list real quick. To find customers, we use power partnering. To refer customers to power partners to receive customers from your other power partners, refer non-customers to power partners. There might, you, you might specialize in million dollar homes and somebody wants a $300,000 condo, you're gonna refer them to, to a competitor, to somebody else, and you get a little referral fee off of it. Uh, attain clients at the lowest cost of time and money, find better and more higher paying clients, and that's crafted through your networking strategy, and you can kind of readjust what markets you're going after just by the script you use in your elevator speech. You can get the decision maker easier and better because what, what I used to do in early on is if I wanted to, wanted to, was doing more on the corporate side, I would find somebody that called on corporate and I call on corporate, hey, let's go call on 10 of your clients and you can introduce me and I'll call on 10 of my clients and I'll introduce you to them. It gets you in the door where 500 cold calls, you can't get the decision maker on the phone. Find somebody else that already services and have that guy walk you in the door, piece of cake. So while others are making 500 calls to get the guys on the phone, I just find out who's, who's already working with the guy and just walk on in. So I do, I do in 10 minutes what others take five hours to do. It's called leverage. It's just ask yourself, how could I be lazier and make 10 times more? And these ideas come in. I got trained by a guy that said, I want to work two hours a week and make a million dollars a year. And he figured out how to do it and he taught me. It's not hard. It's not working harder, it's working smarter. My father, when I told him uh, my income a while back, he's like, 
I made 70 grand a year busting my ass, putting roof on. My, you know, my dad talks. And you make what with your freaking mouth? I used to tell you to shut that. I used to tell you to shut that thing. So here's the thing I want you to understand. Just imagine this business card or whatever, whatever you do. You're working with these, your income will go up. The farther you get from these and the farther up to this, your ears. Listen, shut up and listen. And then find people that can help solve those problems. The farther you go from these to here and this, your income goes up. The highest paid people in every one of your industries, the highest paid mortgage lender, the highest paid real estate agent, the highest paid networker, whatever you do, I don't care what you do for a living, the highest paid person in your industry also speaks. So you're either gonna learn power partnering or you're gonna become a professional cold caller, okay? That's just the way it is. Two places or two sources you are going to get referrals and there's only two. There's only two sources that you're ever gonna get referrals. You are going to get referrals from your past, your current, and your future clients. Your past, your current, and your future clients. You're gonna program their minds with a proper elevator speech at the proper time. You are not. Financial advisors I meet, I've trained thousands. Just met with one yesterday. He, he was trained and all of you were, if you're in the financial or insur insurance industry, at the end of the presentation, slide a piece of paper in front of them and say, so, do you happen to know three other friends and family members I could give a call to? So what people will do is they do the fly swatter technique. You're laughing because you've yeah. been trained in that. That there's something called people use the fly swatter technique on you when you do that. They'll give you three names and numbers to swat you like a fly, and as soon as you leave, they're gonna call us. I just met with this person, man. They slide a piece of paper in front. I'm sorry, I wrote your name down. <laughs> okay. Now let me make make sure we're very clear. You slide a you slide a piece of paper in front of somebody and ask them for names. I want to make very clear. You're asking for leads, are you not? You gotta go freaking cold call. Pick up the yellow pages. Well, you gotta, well, you gotta put pressure on your new client and have them all pissed off at you. So I want you to program their minds and program their reticular activating system so they're so freaking excited to send you referrals. Oh, yes! Because you didn't ask them for names. How many of you heard the term power partner before today? Okay, I'm one of the five founding people that came up with that. Okay, three people, Ivan Miser's one of them and two others. Okay, they took it here. I amplified it by 10. Okay, I don't think there's anybody walking planet Earth that knows more about this, this topic than me. I have studied this. Marcella has been through every training with every other networker before we met, certified networker training, all of that. She was taking a shower. I was brushing my teeth. I stopped brushing my teeth. I taught her more in 10 minutes than she learned in those 10 hour courses about this topic. I live, eat, breathe this topic. I don't think about anything else other than what I'm going to teach you right now. This is my life. Okay, you guys see I'm got serious all of a sudden. Now we're going to rock and roll because I got like 21 minutes to teach you six hours of stuff. This is life-changing stuff if you let it. The definition of power partner is someone who calls on, serves, consults, works with, sells to the exact same person you do. They have your client. They already have your client. Find them, dig in and get them, all right? So this is how you figure out who your power partners are. This is how you figure out who your power partners are. You ask yourself, who has my client? And then you ask yourself, who do I need my, to refer my clients to? So if you're a real estate agent, a mortgage lender, a financial advisor, a human resources consultant, a family law attorney already has your client, why are you knocking on doors? Go find them. Program them with your elevator speech. Get to build a referral relationship with them and get referrals from them. Why would you knock on doors? There's people out there that I have your clients. Find them. Find them. And then you ask yourself, who do I need to refer my clients to? So the real estate agent will say, who has them? And I already named them. They'll go, who, who do my clients need? If they're moving into town, they need a hairstylist, they need a nail salon, they need a garden, they need a house cleaner, they need a roofer, they need a plumber. If you're a real estate agent, it is your job to provide those people to your new client. If you're a hairstylist, it's your job to provide massage, dentist, uh, acupuncturist, chiropractor, nail salon, that's your job. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you're an IT guy, right? He's what, the IT guy. what do you do? Home automation. Fantastic. Real estate agent, general contractor, roofer, plumber, electrician, carpeting, IT guy, commercial real estate, business broker, right? 
commercial architect that's setting up the space planning, all that people that sell commercial office furniture, I could do it for the whole room, we don't have time. It's your job to provide those to your client on an as needed basis. That's a networker. You guys see where we're going with this? Yep. That's a networker. If I left the room, based on the definition of a power partner, somebody who calls on, sells to, serves and consults the same people you do, they already have your client. I wanna know, once you write a number down, how many industries could you write down right now if I left the room for an hour? Not different people, different industries, mortgage, real estate, financial advisor. I want, to, yeah, and I want you to be honest with your number. How many different industries could you write down? Write a number down. <clears throat> you guys ready? How many wrote down zero to five? Raise your hand. Zero to five. Put your hands down. <clears throat> Six to 15. Six to what? Six to 15. One to five. One five. Oh, one 15. Five. Put your hands down. Thank you. 16 to 40. Like it. 41 to 100. I like it. 100 plus. See a hand over there? So I'm, I don't know, it's not my business, I don't care. And she hates it when I tell people about income. But as a general rule, those of you that had 50 plus, the five or six of you probably make more than anyone in the room. In fact, I'm willing to bet anything on it. Okay, so Marcella has 162 different industries. She's had like 2,000 coffee meetings in four years. It's a lot. It's a lot. People go, you're so lucky to know Rick. That's how you made 400 grand last year. She will freaking kill you. <laughs> because what she does is she sits down in every networking group she goes to, every talk, and one of you is going to stand up. And because I only have to do networking now like five or eight hours a week, I was bored. So I sell land with Marcella. Okay. We were at a group and somebody so, and they were an art dealer. I, I, I didn't think of that. Art dealers deal with people who have money. People have money, want to invest in land. So she wrote down art dealer and I think that took us to 163. You never know what you're gonna learn in these groups. Can you guys imagine, I've done 43, it's probably closer to 4,400 at this point. Can you imagine if I met all of you in the room and spent an hour and a half with you, not running my mouth, but talking about what you do, learning, learning more about what you do, learning about your services, how you grew up, how you got there, how you became as successful as you are. Can you imagine, I've had 4,300 of those conversations. Can you imagine what's in my little pea brain? It's, it's unreal. And, and the only thing I was really gifted with is I have near perfect recall if I've had a conversation with you. So if I have coffee with you, I can repeat about half the conversation back five years from now. That's my only gift. That's my only gift. But it's also called, forget that gift. Take friggin' notes. Take friggin' notes. Okay, because people see you taking notes. Here's the thing. I've met with people that are trying to sell me the weight loss potion and all that kind of stuff, and I don't have a problem with it except when you're pitching it on me hard. Okay? I still take two pages of notes. Whether I care or not, taking notes makes you appear that you care. It's just the appearance of caring. If I see everybody in the room and nobody's taking any notes the whole time I'm speaking, I'm screwing up. And it makes me like, what am I doing wrong? I see people taking notes, I go, somebody's learning something. As long as if one of you gets one idea today, it was worth me get up four o'clock in the morning. So how many power partners can you name? How many do you meet with? Unless you're off the chain, busy. I mean, five a week is, is nothing. It's nothing, you have lunch every day, meet with somebody. Five a week is nothing to me. How many coffee meetings per week? How many of you had total? We track all that stuff. All right, so let's talk about my definition. I have to explain this the best I can, okay? Some people hear it, some people see it, some people need to feel it. I want you to just understand this. Going up from here to here is the number of people in your industry. Do you see how there's a whole bunch here and there's not a lot here? So I don't care what you do for a living, you're all swimming here until I move you up. Cool? Say you're a real estate agent, financial advisor, insurance agent, chiropractor, doctor, attorney, whatever you are, all of your competitors are right here. And those people can name, well, we'll get to the numbers in a second. They have very few referrals, they spend a lot of time looking for business and they have fairly low income because they can't name a lot of power partners. As we move up, all your competitors are going after this pool here. I go up to a thousand financial advisors and say, what's your number one power partner CPA? What's your number two power partner estate planning attorney? What's your number three real estate agent? Every one of them gives the same three to five. 
I'll go up to any of you in the room, whatever industry you're in, and I'll find 20 people just like you, and you're all gonna name the same five. So if you can only name five power partners, you're all going after the same five, okay? We gotta get away from the competition to start. What's happening is when you're, all, when you're all going after the same target, we're dropping 50 poles in a bucket with one fish. I wanna drop one pole in the bucket with 100 fish. You guys see the difference? It's leverage, it's thinking out of the box. It's called networking, not net lazy, not net sit around, not net wait for the phone to ring. It's called networking. You work it now, later you get to live a nice life and you don't have to look for business and that's the greatest thing ever. You're starting to separate yourself from the competition. You're proficient. You can start teaching other people at Power Partnerings. Expert, you've had minimum 400. I want to change it to 1,000. You've had minimum 400 one-on-one -on -one coffee. That's, just, that's not just having coffee meetings. Going, so here's what I do. No, that's doing it the way I teach it, which is completely different than what most people do. And a master, you're one of the best known persons. You're deciding who you want to do business with. They are not deciding if they want to do business with you. I don't get picked. I pick you. That's it. I don't live my life where I'm praying somebody hires me. No. They're praying I come and speak. They're praying I'm going to teach them networking. Because when you have five or eight or ten referrals a week, you don't have the time to service all of them. It's called the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of all of your incomes are made by the top 20% of your clients. If they're below that, if you wake up in the morning and you go, oh my God, i got to meet with that joker again. The guys with the million dollars life insurance policy that never call you. The guy with the 10,000 life insurance policy is calling you 50 times a week. Fire them. Get rid of them. People are bitching and complaining. If you wake up in the morning, you have a frown when you think of that person, fire them. So we go, I can't fire them, I need income. Fire them and more business will come into your life. It's weighing you down. It's making you feel like crap. It causes cancer. It causes you not to sleep good. Fire shitty clients. I'm sorry for swearing. Fire them. Get rid of them and find better people. The ones you meet people go, oh God, I gotta meet poor people like that. If you don't have clients, I fire everybody else. I'd rather have one good one and fire the other nine than have one good one and nine shitheads wasting my time. That's just me. Because my time is too valuable, what I teach is too valuable, and what you guys do is too valuable. It's your time. Forget the freaking money. Money's easy to get, time is not. Well, sometimes I'm just honest and say I don't think our personality types are matching. I don't know that I can give you the service you deserve I'm going to refer you to another company I think can serve you better than I can. All right. If you can name zero to four, you're down here. Five, 15, 30, 50, 100, 100 plus, you're, you're, playing, you're playing in a world very few play in. Very few play in. All right. Now, here's the, big, here's the biggest thing. Rick, networking doesn't work. I give this guy a referral. He doesn't get it. I never get any referrals back from him. He sucks. Let, let, me, let, me, let me make clear. There's a reason there's 4,000, 5,000 BNI networking groups. There's a reason why I'm here. It does work. I promise. It works if you believe it works. All right. Here's the thing. There's a possibility you're getting the wrong kind of referrals or not enough referrals, not because networking sucks or that person sucks, because your elevator speech sucks. It's all built around the elevator speech, all of it. The foundation, if I'm gonna teach you to build your networking house, number one, elevator speech. Number one, elevator speech. There's nothing more important. How you program the reticular activating system is the key, it's the most important thing. S followed secondly by, maybe there's a possibility that that person can't send you referrals. Let me explain. I've had this conversation a thousand times. I sent a referral. He hasn't sent me one, he sucks. He's selfish, he's a taker. All right, so let me explain something here. Number one, there are six laws you need to know. Break one of them, I can't teach you to build a referral-based practice. I went through Brian Tracy's 100 Unbreakable Laws of Business Success, six of them, it took me two years to figure it out. Six of them you need for networking. The law of reciprocity, the law of attraction, the law of mutual exchange, the law of increasing returns, the law of abundance and Parkinson's law. Break one of them, I can't teach you to build a referral-based practice. The law of reciprocity is in the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita. It's the only, there's only two things that all religions agree on, love and the belief in the law of reciprocity. So if you're giving, I've met millions of people that say, I'm going to give this guy a referral because I want to get in good with him and get referrals from him. You broke the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity is to give with no thought of return. 
and abundance will come back tenfold from the most unexpected places, the most unexpected sources, at the most unexpected time. Zig Ziglar, you can have anything in the world you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. Okay. Why do you think he's so rich? I think Zig Ziglar's so rich. He didn't think about what he got. Let's talk a little bit about why we give a referral and sometimes we don't get a referral back. Because there's a possibility that some power partners refer to us, but we can't refer back. A perfect example would be a financial advisor. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. A bankruptcy attorney receives clients from a financial advisor. So BK attorney, I know a BK attorney that, that gets a ton of business for financial advisors. She's never yet sent a referral to a, a financial advisor. If I'm in bankruptcy, I don't have any money right now. It might take a little while. So as a general rule, early on in the process, the financial advisor is going to send to BK. BK is not going to send back. I have a real estate agent in one of my groups. She's, her name's Lois Cox. She's really high up in Prudential in Pleasanton. She's been in the same group that I run for 11 years. She's given the carpet cleaning guy 265 something carpet cleaning jobs and she's never gotten a referral. She doesn't care. Here's why. She walks in, she goes, <laughs> I can't list your house, we gotta clean the carpets. She calls Kurt Holman in. He cleans the carpets. They sell the house. She tells all her friends and family members about it. Did she not get referrals from the carpet cleaner? Those of you that are saying yes, you get it. Those that don't, keep thinking about it. So she gave the carpet cleaner 265 cleaning jobs Never got a referral. There's a lot of people that go, he sucks. He never sends me referrals. He never will. Right. You're in there first. Guys, understand that. Yeah. There are power partners going to send you tons of referrals, and you're never going to send them back. Start a referral, pay them a freaking referral fee. That's another way to keep them around. We pay them crazy amounts. And then there's some people you're going to send referrals to. You're never going to get one back. Don't hold it against them. There's a possibility that you're just in there before them. Okay? You guys getting this? And then there's 50-50. The financial advisor to the banker, to the real estate agent, the mortgage under the CPA, life insurance agent, makes a beautiful circle. Makes a beautiful circle. That's pure power partnering, give and take. But it always doesn't work that way. It doesn't always work that way. You gotta ask the correct questions to yourself. To yourself, okay? And then you use what's called the power partner wheel to determine who your power partners are. Then we gotta make the list. Then we got to find them. Then we got to contact them. Just this right here is that hour long webinar that you were on. You got to contact them. Then you got to meet them. Okay. And then you got to present to them. And if you think it's your sales presentation, you are sadly mistaken. You sell to a power partner, you might as well throw their card in the garbage because dang sure bet your card's getting thrown in the garbage. You do not any, under any circumstance. Why would a real estate agent meet a mortgage lender and sell to them? So you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next... Are you out of your mind? You just lost every referral opportunity you will ever have in your lifetime with that human being. Your cards are going to go in the garbage. So you're going to present to them your power partner presentation. And then you strategize with them to figure out how am I going to send you more referrals? I need to know what you do, what you specialize in, what are the pain points of your clients, all that kind of stuff. We go over all that in detail. And then we power partner. So keep in mind as I'm going through this, this is how you determine who your power partners are. Okay. So you gotta ask yourself, what's, what, does my, what does my perfect client look like? Rick, I thought I was figuring out power partners. Yeah, you gotta know who your client is first before you know who calls on them. You gotta write that down. And then you gotta write down their title. So these you do the corporate work, the CEO, CFO, CIO, what's their title? Homeowner, first time home buyer, the daughter, the daughter of someone who's getting put in an elder care facility or doing it in home. I went through that with both of my grandmothers at both circumstances. What's their title? What's their circumstance? Why would they hire you? You need to know in great detail. If it's corporate, company size, how many employees do they have? What's the gross annual revenue? Okay, let's just, let's just say for fun, somebody, a, refer, a, a real estate agent is sending you five a month and it's 200,000, you don't even do them, or they're five million and you don't do them. What I always say is if you're getting the wrong kind of referrals, it's because you're not telling them what you specialize in because you might not know. So you gotta know circumstances. Why would they hire you? Write it down. What's their net worth? What's their investable funds? I have a financial advisor in one of my groups. In his elevator speech, he says, a perfect client for me is a friend or family member, you know, that have liquid minimum a half a million that, and then he goes into the quotes like Marcella did. Because he doesn't want somebody with 100,000. If he gets a referral for 100,000, he can't serve them. 
If he gets that referral, it's his fault, right? But if he gets a million dollar referral, it's his fault. So people go, I ah, get all crappy referrals. It's all the wrong kind. It's not them, it's you. Your elevator speech sucks. That's just it. This is the way it is. Take responsibility for the crappy referrals you're getting, for the lack of referrals you're getting, the, but the money you're not making. It's your fault. It's not everybody else. It's not politics. It's not religion. It's none of that. It's your elevator speech and your, and your mindset. Are they hiring, far? they moving up, moving down? If they're hiring a bunch of employees. That's Mr. IT guy. Who does that? Commercial mover, commercial architect, furniture, staffing company. I'd be in every, if I did what you did, I'd be in every staffing company in the Bay Area. If a company's hiring 50 employees, don't they need more computers? Hello, boom. Absolutely. Did you just learn something new? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. See, I just made him a million dollars. Again, elevator speech, it has to be quotes. Only quotes fire the reticular activating system. And then there are some goods. Let me, let me make sure we're, we're on the same page here. Out of your mouth, it's nine, when you're talking to somebody in the coffee meeting, it's nine, nine out of 10, it's nine, ah, blah, ah, and it's one good. Yeah. That's just the human nature. That's why Zig Ziglar, Brian Trout, all those guys made tens and hundreds of millions of dollars helping people be positive because it's easier to be negative. That's just, unfortunately, it's the way people are wired. It is, it's the, it's the, it's the path it's the path that, because if I'm, if I'm telling you how good life is, it pushes people, he's bragging, he's, he's probably stole all that money. But if I bitch and complain, I got a new friend. <laughs> right? Okay. So it's very, it's very rare, it's very rare you hear this. So it's mostly you gotta listen for the bitch and complain. I didn't say listen for the bragging because you think that person sucks. The only reason I talk at all about any, any modicum of success that I've had is because this is my number one belief. Number one belief. This is my opinion. My mentors and hers make a, are, are worth over a billion, make about 15 million a year. The other one's worth about 400 million and make six million a year. And then the other one's worth like 140 million. She makes about four million a year. I'm mentored by people that make minimum five times more than me, minimum because they've been there, done that. I don't take advice, this is just me. I don't take advice from people that make 20 grand a year, that's just me. <coughs> so I'm just letting you know, I, I might be mildly successful at this because I don't think you should be listening to me. I have no right in the world to be up here if I'm not mildly successful. That's the only reason I talk about it. It's the only reason, it's not bragging. I just hope I'm edifying myself just enough so you maybe take in, take in some of what I'm saying. All right, listen for the bad, all that kind of stuff, ba 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 ba. listen for the good, listen for the bad. And then when you come up with all of that stuff, you look at that list and you go, and you start at the top. And one of them was first time home buyer. Who would know about that? One of them is somebody needs to lose weight. Who would know about that? One of them is they need a new roof. They want to do an addition. Um, they need new computers. Their computers are running too slow. Uh, they, need lighting they need lighting control. You know what? I want to hit a button right when I pull up and I want my lights on, I want my garage open, and I want my freaking coffee pot to turn on. I know what you do. Come on. Who else would know about that? A general contractor, an electrician. She would. There's a million people that would find them. Stop looking for clients. I don't know if you do or not. Look for Good. Perfect. You're already doing this stuff? Yes, I am. I want to high five you guys. Everybody's shaking my hand. I'm trying to. Give me a high five. All right. Okay. And then after you go through that entire list and go, and go who could send me referrals? Who could send me referrals? Keep in mind, that's selfish. Then you gotta go, who do my clients need? Now we're thinking about other people, but we have to use the two lists. That's how Marcella got up to 163-ish. And then we wanna know who our competitors are. Do you know how many IT guys I have met that get a job? Is it, are you a one-man gang or you got some other guys? About six people. Six people. Could you service a company with 500 computers? Usually that. Okay, you'd bring another guy in to help you. You bring another company in and then you guys could, you could, you could pay him and make him a contractor under you for two weeks. Is that a competitor? Yes. Because sometimes you're gonna need to bring a competitor in and pay a referral fee. Done, piece of cake. Oh, sorry, if you're in a real estate world, it's called a marketing consulting fee. I don't care what you call it. I've worked with financial advisors, I can't take one, I put, I put two grand in their kid's college fund. There are ways to pay people referral fees, okay? All right, this is the wheel. And what you do is you draw this wheel and you put yourself right here. 
And then we take every one of those circumstances, first time home buyer, whatever it is. Young lady, I didn't catch your name. Young lady has Esme. name. Esme. Esme. Esme, here we go. Real handshake. And you help people with their image. Yes. Okay, so one of the people that needs a, needs a new image is somebody looking for a job. Absolutely. So the number one person you're looking for is a recruiter. That's strictly my opinion. Yeah. Resume writer, photographer. Mm -hmm. Okay, you already working on that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna put image consultant here. Right, image consultant here, and right here we're gonna put all the circumstances that would bring her in, looking unemployed, right? Um, recently divorced on the dating scene, right? Perfect. We're gonna go looking for a job, and you are gonna ask yourself this question. Who would know about that besides me? Counselor, financial advisor, CPA, and you're gonna name every industry you can think of. You're gonna come up with every single circumstance you had written down. Lose weight, gain weight, leaky roof, New carpeting, moving up, moving down, empty nest, or their kids are out of, their kids are out of college, they want to get a smaller home. Whatever the circumstance is, you got to have 15, 20, 25 different circumstances why they would bring you in. Okay, and then you're going to put every one of them here one at a time, and you're going to look at it and go, who else would know about that? Ba, 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 ba. Look at the next one. Who else would know about that? Ba, 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 ba. That's how you come up with 100. It's a lot of work, guys. It's tough. I do it step by step. I walk you through the whole process on the program. I live coach it. You'll have, you'll have 50 to 100 before I get done with you, before the program's done, that's for dang sure. All right, now, this is the visual of what a professional networker is. Because we're deep in the heart of San Josie. <laughs> but there's a possibility that you'll get a referral and you just don't want to go that far. So you dang sure better have a, uh, a, a, a cohort that you can refer in Cupertino, in Fremont or I live in the Pleasanton, San Ramon, Danville area. If you don't want to go that far, you better have somebody to refer to them. Okay, so here's the thing. You're in this group, you're in BNI, you're in one of my groups, you're in another group, you're in three or four different networking groups. Your job as a professional networker is not to get referrals. Rick, but I come here for referrals, are you an idiot? No. <laughs> yes, I am, but she'd say I am. Okay, your job, refer the people in the other groups to each other on an as needed basis, so not only can you get referrals? Listen closely, guys. This is the key. This is the big, this is kind of the big close. You get referrals from power partners. You give power partners referrals. This is the number one thing in analyzing thousands of people, thousands of companies. This is the number one thing. Introduce power partners to power partners. That's the number one thing that is so overlooked. People don't do it enough. So my lovely young mortgage lender over there, you're right here. And then you know other real estate agents, you know financial advisors, and you better be introducing them to each other because one's in San Jose, one's in Cupertino, one's in Fremont. And they might want to meet each other. So you create an email, so-and-so, you're a mortgage lender, so-and-so, you're a real estate agent, I thought you two would like to meet and have coffee. You fill in their contact information, you hit send, it's in your drafts. One way that I can probably help you guys make between five and $50,000 more this year is if you've ever typed the same email twice, it's costing you money. It's called type an email and send it to them and save a copy in your drafts. Why would you retype an email? Are you kidding me? Save it in your drafts and in the subject line title it what you would look for it as. So mine, I have one that's called thank you for the referral. You send me a referral, I got an email, it's already typed, all I get is says hi blank. Blah, 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 blah. All you do is type your name and send it. I send an email in one second, it takes you five minutes, that's why I make more. That's just it. It's called leverage, being lazy. Get lazier, make more money. That's just the way it is. Guys, an honor to be here. I, I, I think the last talk I did was nine years ago with like the Sheraton or something. Is that good? Yeah. It's the best I could do. Thank you.